As our story opens today, George is preparing to swing through the jungle, while at point-blank range, a hunter is ready to shoot him. Remember, no, not too fast. Okay. Uh, ready, aim. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe we better begin a little earlier. Fine with George. It really all started here in Syncopated Manor, home of the eccentric Duke of Ellington, world-renowned big game hunter. That does it, dear. With this Tasmanian aardvark, I now have a trophy head of every known animal in the world. Then why so sad, Piggy? What do I do for an encore? Oh, cheer up, dear. Here's one specimen you don't have. An ape man. But that is George of the jungle. Exactly. I think there's room for him over the fireplace. For his head, anyway. Oh, Cynthia, you are clever. So within a fortnight, whatever that is, the headhunters were within a stone's throw of George's treetop retreat. <coughs> oh, somebody within stone's throw again. Yes, maybe friendly natives. Hmm, I don't think they're natives. Not very friendly, too. You missed him, Piggy. Yes, I must find some way to lure him within gunshot. Why not take something he values highly and use it as bait? Exactly. Uh, but what? I don't know. Why not take it all? And so the next day... There. That's the lot. One of these awful-looking things must be what he treasures most. George, someone has ransacked the place. Everything's gone. Hey, you know, it looked more roomy this way. But they've taken Ursula, your beloved mate. In jungle, broken heart healed quickly. They've even taken your autographed picture of Lawrence Welk. My hero. They really know how to hurt a guy. George, get mad. <coughs> Steady, George. George, take jungle vengeance. Aided by his jungle cunning, George found the culprits in a remarkably short time. Ah, oh, there you are. Evil Hunter, give back Lawrence. Also, uh, him. Now's your chance, Piggy. Pull the triggy. Heart, a sitting bird. Can't be done, Cynthia. I tell you what, old boy. You let me take three shots at you. On the wing, as it were. And you can have everything back again. What keep George from taking it now? One false step, and I blow it to Flindo. No, no, you got deal. Don't, George. That's the Duke of Ellington. He wants your head for his trophy room. My head? Stuff and nonsense. Nonsense, no. Stuffed, yes. George, this is madness. True. Would make exciting plot for story, though. Who'd believe it? Ready? Ready. And this is where we came in. <laughs> The Duke took dead aim, but at the last instant, fortunately, George had run into a thorn bush and was safe. Some kind of safe. The shot, however, shattered a tree branch which fell on the Duke. That one. This time, George, I want you to run past as quickly as you can. He looks pretty fast, Piggy. Nobody's faster than a slug from a 50 caliber elephant gun, Cynthia. All right, George. Go. And the fleet-footed ape man dashed through the tall grass as the itchy-fingered Duke drew a bead on him. Then as he emerged from a clump of wait-a-bit bush... He outran a 50 caliber slug. That's impossible! Nothing impossible when you're chased by angry rhinoceros. Rhinoceros? What rhinoceros? That rhinoceros. That too. But there was still one shot to go, and the desperate Duke was not above cheating just a smidge. Exactly. Cynthia, hand me my bazooka. An anti-tank rocket? Oh, Piggy, do you think you should? I'll try not to damage the head. Oh, I'm so relieved. For his last shot, the Duke poised George at the top of Blind Man's Bluff. Now you dive a thousand feet into the roaring cataract. What cataract? This dry season. Then I suggest you perspire a great deal on the way down. No, George, you'll be killed. Maybe George get lucky. How? Maybe he shoot me before I hit bottom. You see, dear, I can't lose. And the jungle lord stepped forward to begin his fatal dive. But the rocks that held the board were loose and... 
The explosive shell missed George and struck the bottom of the gourd. Releasing an underground geyser of hot water, the geyser met George halfway. Again, the ape man was safe. In boiling water? Some kind of safe. <laughs> a geyser. Now, how often would a thing like that happen? Oh, it happens here every time a writer gets stuck for an ending. That free. Now, George, take back precious possessions. <laughs> Better take care of that coal, fella. Can't understand the word you say. Then you must return empty-handed, Your Grace. Exactly. I think I have an idea. How about... Capital idea. Wizard, I'll do it. And so a short time later, back in syncopated manner... There's my last trophy, dear. A perfect duplicate of George's head. But, Piggy, that's just an odd-shaped lump of solid marble. Exactly. When you find yourself in danger, when you're threatened by a stranger, when it looks like you will take a licking, <laughs> there is someone waiting who will hurry up and rescue you. Just call for Super Chicken. <laughs> but if you're afraid, you'll have to overlook it. Besides, you knew the job was dangerous when you took it. <laughs> he will drink his super sauce and throw the bad guys for a loss, and he will bring them in alive and kicking. <laughs> there is one thing you should learn when there is no one else to turn to. Call for Super Chicken. <laughs> This is McTasty's Gymnasium and Steam Bath. And this is the pride of McTasty's Gym, a 7,000-pound diamond-studded dumbbell. Truly a thing of beauty, McTasty. Yeah, and it's worth a fortune. Ain't you afraid somebody will steal it? You kidding? It weighs 7,000 pounds. Nobody could even lift it. Nevertheless, the very next morning, the dumbbell was gone. Ooh, ooh, my diamond-studded dumbbell. It's been took. Fortunately, Henry Cabot Henhouse III was in the gym for his morning steam bath. What's happened here? Somebody took the dumbbell. Fred? Kidnapped? Who's kidnapped? Who? Fred. Somebody took Fred. Whatever for? Yes, a senseless crime. Fred, you're back. I wasn't away. It's the other dumbbell that was took. But what cook could lift up a 7,000-pound dumbbell? Only one, McTasty. The muscle, the world's strongest criminal. This looks like a job for Super Chicken. Get the super sauce, Fred. I'll slip out of this funny towel and into the funny suit. Well, here's looking at you. Please, I don't have my sweatshirt on. The super sauce went to work and transformed the mighty weak Henry into the mighty strong Super Chicken. How come you went after you drank it? No time to explain, Fred. Come on. We've got a date with a dumbbell. To the super coop. And the mighty chicken took to the air to apprehend the muscle. <laughs> they headed right for the muscle's health ranch hideaway, the juice bar X, where at that moment the world's strongest criminal was toying with the 7,000-pound diamond-studded dumbbell. Gotta keep the old triceps in shape. Suddenly... You're under arrest, muscle. Drop that dumbbell. Hey, who are you? My name is Super Chicken. The Super Chicken? Test his prowess if you will, but never challenge his weight. Well, this is a pleasure, Super Chicken. Let me shake your hand. Uh, wing. Oh! Pretty feeble grip for a superhero. You need exercise. I guess you didn't hear me. You're under arrest. First things first. We got to get you in condition. You're still under arrest. Now for a little sparring, partner. No, no, keep your beak under your left wing. Time. What for? Super Chicken has something to say. Yes, you're... Under. Yes. Ah, uh, rest. But it's not time for a rest yet. Well, it was one exhausting exercise after another. The rope climb up a burning rope. Oh! Indian wrestling with a real Indian. <laughs> and the muscle zone vibrating machine. Keep shaking. I'll get some wheat germ and virus milk. Fred. All this exercise has worn off my super sauce. 
Wait, I'll mix up another batch. Double strength. And Fred quickly mixed the super, super sauce. Uh, quick, it's burning my hands through these asbestos gloves. Down the hatch. The super, super sauce went to work, and in seconds the puny bullet was transformed into a bed at the county hospital. Little strong, was it? I'd say that, yes. Must have put in too much mustard. Well, what do you say, old buddy? I say, you're under arrest. You look a little peaked. The doctor says he'll be up and around in a month or so. Nonsense. What you need is exercise. And the muscle took Super Chicken for a brisk 10-mile run back to the health farm. Now we're going to chop wood together, you and me. Together? Yeah. I must be the chopper, and you must be the axe. Okay? Five-minute break, and then it's push-ups time. Super Chicken, what has he done to you? Name it. Gee, he's just too much muscle. We better give up. Nonsense. Go mix another batch of super sauce. Triple strength. But the double strength blew you to smithereens. Trust me, Fred. And Fred reluctantly made up a batch of super, super, super sauce. Time's up. Muscle, you're under arrest. Again? Here's the super, super, super sauce. Good. Drink it, Fred. Right. Mm -hmm. I drank the sauce. Good heavens. I'll blow up. Let me worry about that, Fred. Now, Muscle, I'll bet you you can't pick up Fred with one hand and hold him till I count three. Easy. You lose. Not yet. One, two. And Fred and the Muscle were both transformed into twin beds at the county hospital. You finally got me, Super Chicken. Don't thank me. Thank Fred. Don't thank me. I knew the job was dangerous when I took it. Now to return the 7,000-pound diamond-studded dumbbell. Careful, Super Chicken. Rest easy, Fred. This is child's play for... <laughs> the mighty chicken had done it again. So when you hear that cry in the sky... <laughs> you'll know it's coming from... The 32nd floor of the county hospital. Tom Slick, Tom Slick, let me tell you why. He's the best of all good guys. Tom Slick, Tom Slick, in the Thunderbolt, we slap her once he's on your tail. Welcome to the Muncie, Indiana Fairgrounds and the start of the Buster Baines Memorial Blimp Race. Here's our sponsor, Stretch Snapback, president of the Bad Year Blubber Company. Makers of Bad Year products for home industry and banking. Remember, folks, if your check bounces, it's a bad year. Many thanks, Stretch. The blimps are moving toward the starting line. There's the starting gun. There's our first casualty. It's Whitehead, Danny Drop, and the wood prop cloud pusher. Why, fur, did you shoot a big raggedy hole into my balloon? I told you, folks, it's a bad year. There goes Fletch Sparrow and the twin screw barn jumper. And here in the converted Thunderbolt grease slapper, the blimp racer's blimp racer, Mr. Hot Air himself, Tom Slick. Yay! Thanks, Hot Air fans. But where are Tom's great and good friends, Gertie Growler and Marigold? We're over here competing in the William Tell Arrow Shoot and Love In, Bobby. Stand still, Marigold. Drat, I missed. Here comes Tom, Gertie. Look at him scorching along. Scorching? I can run faster than that in my hippie boots. <laughs> missed again. Bringing up the rear is the sinister-looking chain drive Skyhooker. Highlighted by the Bum Sport, Bum Sport, Baron Automatic. Correction, it's me, Crutcher, the Toady Toady. That's the Baron. Pay attention to your racing, Clutcher. This time, I take care of the dirty tricks. If you want the wrong thing done right, do it yourself, I always say. And you know what I always say? 
That's what I always say. The blimps are heading for the turning pylon, and the Tom Slick takes the lead. Yay! Well raced, Tom Slick. Many thanks, good sport, Fledge Sparrow. I think I'm going to be sick. Tom Slick is out of front, Master. You had better do something quick. Something else. Very well. Now you will see how a real schlemiel could stop Tom Slick. With a cassava melon? <laughs> but one of these cassava melons is really a bomb. Listen to it tick. Ow! That missed again. A little arrow wouldn't stop there an automatic. Here, Tom Slick, from a well-wisher. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Wisher. Mm, it's delicious. Baron, you threw Tom Slick a real melon. Then where's the one that's ticking? Where? Where, 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 where? Ah, hear it is. Tom Slick is almost at the halfway point with a commanding lead. Yay! Keep at it, Tom. You move. And a good thing, too, Gertie. But what is this? The pylon is moving. If I were the swearing type, I'd swear that pylon is moving. Oh, come on now. I can't get around it if it keeps moving. Baron, is that you doing that? Of course. I'll keep ahead of Tom Slick till he runs out of gas. Then I will bring the pylon back for you to go around. Oh, clever master. Yes, Clutcher. All it takes is a little... Out! Out! I just hate to have people drop in unexpectedly. And Tom turns the pylon and streaks for home. Yay! What next, oh, mighty Baron? <laughs> Besides that, I mean... Here's $50. Stop the Ferris wheel when I get to the top. You're a boss. You noticed that, did you? And I shall help my beloved master by ramming Tom Slick. Uh-oh. The chain drive skyhooker is changing course. It's heading right for the Thunderbolt Grease Slapper. Tom Slick, I am going to put a crimp in your blimp at point blank range. Tom is in double danger, Gertie. So are you, hon. I've got two arrows left. Ready? Aim. I thought you wanted to stay on top. The heavy cannonball hurtles toward Tom from the rear as the skyhooker charges him from the front. That's mighty sloppy steering, fellow. But at the last instant, Tom swerves aside and avoids a nasty collision. Yay! But what about the cannonball? Sorry, I guess. On your feet, Clutcher. I still have one dirty trick left. But our blimp is bluey. We can't win now. There are more important things than winning, Clutcher. Such as? Cheating, for one thing. Come on. The desperate Baron is going to make a last attempt to down Tom Slick. Boo! Hear that crowd, Clutcher? <laughs> kind of gets you right here, doesn't it? No, it gets me right here. <laughs> See? When I give the word, you light the fuse, and it's kablooey, Tom Slick. Yes, Master. I... <laughs> Not yet, Clutcher! Not yet! Hmm. The fireworks are supposed to start at seven. And the winner in a blinding finish, Tom Slick! Yay! Congratulations, Tom. As usual, Marigold. <laughs> yeah, missed again. But, Gertie, you hit the apple fair and square. What makes you think I was aiming for the apple? <laughs>